Hello there, this is MJ. I love Star Wars, and uh, you're probably here because you know that and because you love Star Wars. I'm ready to talk about Star Wars The Clone Wars Season 7, Episode 6, called Deal No Deal. Uh, I don't know why uh, <laughs> the, these two episodes so far have been like uh, the turn of phrase things with uh, a word taken out to sound a little weird. Although maybe, I don't know, maybe Deal No Deal is a real thing. But anyway, regardless, here we go. This is the second episode of the Ahsoka's Walkabout arc. Um, I'm just going to throw a little shade at somebody without naming them. Uh, I was recently uh, privy to a live stream talking about Mandalorian Season 2. For some reason, people were talking about Osaka, Ozaka, and I thought, oh wow, they released Baby Yoda's name? They're talking about Ozaka? Is that his name? That's Well, that's kind of an interesting name. It sounds a little Japanese to me. I think that's really neat. Turns out that people were mispronouncing Ahsoka, as an Ahsoka Tano, yes! Anyway, I just thought that was kind of funny. Um, so, I'm not sure why I felt compelled to bring that up, but I did. Uh, anyway, uh, in brief, I'm going to say I really liked this episode. I had a lot of fun. Uh, it was very enjoyable to me, and uh, I'm, I mean, I hadn't given up or quit or whatever. I, <laughs> it's silly. I mean, this is the Clone Wars. This is Ahsoka we're talking about. I'm not going to give up on on a story about her. Uh, just I was displeased with how that first episode was written. There were some things in the dialogue, some things in the scenario that didn't quite work out for me, and uh, that was really disappointing. Uh, there's something uh, not related to this episode that I wanted to bring up uh, that's actually, eh, it's tangentially related to this episode. There were some load, some uh, like, you know, binary load lifters. There were loading droids in this episode that were loading spice onto the, um, the, the silver angel. Um, trace a ship. Anyway, uh, it got me thinking about like, hey, there were those binary load lifters that were demolition droids before in that first, you know, in the previous episode. And uh, I put a little thing out on Twitter because I realized, hey, uh, I recognize this, uh, you know, droid from from this episode of uh, Clone Wars. Something about it looks really familiar to me. And then I went back and I discovered uh, one, what is it, LB? Yeah, T1LB, I think is the name of this binary droid, or this, you know, load lifter type droid uh, that was a property of the Jedi, uh, that's from the uh, Knights of the Old Republic uh, comic series by um, uh, John Jackson Miller. John Jackson Miller, yeah. Uh, it's by him, and uh, anyway, just kind of cute. I wanted to point that out because uh, it reminded me that, you know, there's a, you know, I don't know. It was just kind of a cute little, um, like, deep cut, I don't know, lore thing, but just, you know, a, a consistency, uh, bringing stuff in potentially from like, uh, the, uh, old Republic type era, which is, uh, something that has been done a little bit in Clone Wars and whatever. And you probably know all this if you're, if you're into this. So, uh, anyway, I just wanted to say, I really did like this episode. Um, my favorite thing in the episode was that there was actual, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to just come back to that. So when we saw Kessel at first, we saw the shot of it that I got a really poor picture of cause I'm doing it legally. I'm taking pictures of my, uh, screen with my camera the computer screen. Anyway, uh, this is Kessel. They went to Kessel in the solo movie. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I thought that was really neat to see that, especially because we've heard about, you know, the spice mines of Kessel. And, uh, it was shocking because we saw this as Kessel first. Then it was this verdant, beautiful world. There was a lovely palace with this, uh, major domo who was a, a Twi'lek. Uh, you know, he's connected to the royal family, the king of the, uh, I don't know if it's a hereditary monarch or not, but the monarchy of uh, Kessel, and I thought that was very interesting that, uh, you know, they have a monarchy and there's a beautiful side of the world. And then we got to see the you know dark side of it, the seedy underbelly where there's slaves who are being held to mine spice, which can be used, you know, much like other substances uh, for uh, recreational effects or for medicinal effects. And um, it turns out that they're supposed to be taking this spice to the uh, Pikes over on Obadiah. Is the planet actually called Obadiah? Like the book from the Bible? Anyway, that's interesting. Um, I didn't mind Okadiah uh, being involved, but that was in the A New Dawn, which was Cain and Jairus' book, also by John Jackson Miller. There you go, bringing it all together. Um, uh, Okadiah was a cool barkeep who was uh, friends with uh, Cain and Jairus, and I think Cain adopted his look. Um, yeah, that sounds about right to me, if I recall the book correctly. Anyway, getting off on a tangent, my favorite thing about this episode was how much conflict there was. Uh, I would say Trace and Ahsoka remained friends, and I would say Rafa and Ahsoka, uh, the gap between them closed a little bit as they got onto this, you know, sp spice smuggling job. Um, 
But it was just interesting because there was dynamism and there was movement in all the relationships that were established in the previous episode. And there was a little bit of mistrust between the characters. And uh, there was a little turn where Trace felt like she was betrayed by Ahsoka because Ahsoka was not on her side. And she, in fact, said, I'm on uh, Rafa's side at this moment. Um, but it was interesting to see just, like, Ahsoka so much more worldly from from these sisters or them these sisters because she spent all this time uh i don't know how much of the clone war maybe two years or a good solid year and now she she grew up so <laughs> i'd say she's probably spent like two and a half years in the clone wars uh doing her thing i think she became uh, anakin's padawan when she was 15 and she's come on she's got to be 18 by now um right maybe the clone wars went on for like three and a half years i don't know anyway um i'm not saying i'm just saying okay guys I, and and I was, I prefer this outfit that they put her in here, and I was against the outfit that Filoni put this character who uh, he thinks of as his daughter in uh, when she changed. Uh, anyway, we could have, if you want to at me, go ahead and do that later, but I got to get on with this review. I really enjoyed all the conflict between these ladies as they got themselves into a pickle, and then they got out of it. It was a great thing to see the Pikes again, because they're such interesting, neat uh, characters, and I don't think we understand, I mean, they're a race of criminals, uh, much like, uh, oh man, what's she's always race anyway those lizard people with the pheromones i uh, can't remember their names now but um drop it drop it buddy don't go don't go there I, I keep trying to think of what they're called but i'm trying to not do that so anyway uh you know as always the composition of the shots in this were beautiful they scream star wars this over the shoulder look through the cockpit viewport or whatever oh, it's so star wars it's so good it just feels good and it makes you feel like you're in there. I, I think beyond all those things that it's nostalgic, it also makes you feel like you're in there with the characters experiencing their conflict and that you're in the same danger that they're in. It really helps you to empathize with them, I guess, as you see, I'm trapped here in this cockpit. I can't move and these ships are coming in towards me. There's nothing I can do. So anyway, uh, yeah, I was so-so on that first episode and I really like this episode. And again, the cinematography, it's just fantastic. I love it. Uh, probably the best thing about the Clone Wars overall, you can quibble about uh, character performances, you can quibble about uh, story, you know, things that they chose to explore in the stories, but I do not think you can quibble about how good it is in uh, certain things like some of the directing and composition of shots and just how well they get it. Um, as far as it being Star Wars. Anyway, sorry about that. So that's pretty much all I have to say. I really like this episode. I can't wait to see uh, what kind of pickle these ladies, uh, or I guess the, they'll probably con be continuing to run from the pikes. I mean, obviously they're caught in their tractor beam, so they're stuck with them. It'll be interesting to see how they get out of this mess. And uh, gosh, I don't know. I don't have much else to say besides that. I really liked it. So um, let's see, what's next? So I shared with you the droid thing from uh, kind of connecting legends and whatnot. And I have my end card thing. Okay, so uh, anyway, that's the end of my review. You can leave now. I'm gonna do a little self-plugging right now. I have a bunch of other podcasts. I'm showing them on the screen right now. If you're watching the video version, uh, then you're probably on my website, um, which is mjmunoz.com. And if you're not, you can go there easily. There's a podcast tab where you can see that I've got Swinging Through Comics, where I talk about Marvel and other comics, but mostly Marvel, because I really like Marvel. I've got Going Ultra, where I discuss Ultraman, which is Tokusatsu, which is actually gonna be made into a Marvel comic pretty soon, which is exciting for me, because it is. Um, stuff coming from Japan to the West being, you know, legitimized so to speak, even though the comics industry is seemingly currently in collapse right now. I don't know. Uh, there's also a King of Hearts, Queen of Sorrows uh, podcast I did where I have like 50 or so episodes covering every single episode of Mobile Fighter G Gundam, which is one of my favorite anime of all time. Uh, I have an ongoing show where I talk about uh, Japanese tokusatsu, Kamen Rider specifically. I'll, I'll touch on other stuff, Super Sentai and whatnot, but mostly Kamen Rider. And now that Kamen Rider is legally available in the U.S., I might just uh, drop the current, or probably when I drop the currently airing Kamen Rider show, I will focus on uh, talking about the old stuff all the way back from 1970. There's a karate bug man and he fights Nazis or like neo-Nazis. What more could you want guys, right? Uh, also, of course, uh, there's this show. And then I have another uh, tokusatsu show uh, that I did. It's completed. It's about 20 episodes long. It's called Another Rider Cast where I sampled the debut. So the first two episodes of 20 different Kamen Riders from uh, Kamen Rider Kuga to Kamen Rider Zio. And uh, that's pretty cool stuff. Uh, besides that, I've got um, a Redbubble store and I have a variety of merch on there. I've got my balance uh, design which has cross savers and a crystal and a little Jedi sounding or um, uh, <laughs> it's got a little mantra that I made up on there uh, and I think it's pretty cool and the mantra 
Uh, I can't read the mantra to you because when I try to zoom in, it doesn't work. Here's the mantra. It says, in balance lies power to hear the dark and walk in light. Besides that, I have some other designs for Star Wars stuff. I've got uh, a design of this cool quote from Luke from uh, Kylo Ren, uh, Rise of Kylo Ren issue two. He says, the light side is a blade and so am I. And that was really cool. Uh, you can get it on baby clothes, kid shows, uh, kid shows, kid clothes, hoodies. You can get a dress, uh, men's and women's t-shirts, stickers, mugs, all sorts of things. Um, so you can get either my cool Luke quote one or you can get my uh, crossed uh, laser sword or beam sword uh, with the crystal and the mantra if you uh, want to support me and the stuff that I do. And I just, I have fun doing these designs. Um, and because I enjoy it. I'm, I'm a little bit of an artist. I, I do some drawings and uh, I enjoy it. And I especially enjoy making art. It's uh, on the phone with the, the app I use and everything. It's, it's really neat and really entertaining to me. So anyway, uh, I like that stuff and uh, I like making podcasts. So I'm going to keep doing it. Uh, I think I'm going to slow down on the pace of uh, these uh, Star Wars ones and I'm just going to focus on finishing off uh, Clone Wars Season 7 and then I'll move on to something else. Um, maybe touching more on comics. I don't know. I mentioned Knights of the Old Republic. I'm really super, super tempted to just read all the Knights of the, Republic, of the Old Republic comics again and uh, do a quick commentary, like a couple, you know, less five minutes or less commentary in each one of those. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep trying to do that, and then one day I just might. <laughs> Who knows? We'll see. MJ Love Star Wars can be found uh, with Swinging Through Comics uh, on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and mjmunoz.com slash STC. It's still under the umbrella of Swinging Through Comics. I'll probably branch it off into its own podcast after uh, after this Clone Wars uh, set of podcasts is over, I know, or reviews is over. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, check out mjmunoz.com for more of my work. I have multiple podcasts, as uh, you've seen, and original works of fiction there. I'm an aspiring author who will gladly accept your financial support through coffee, or you can buy Star Wars merch or other from my Redbubble store. Relevant links in the show notes. If, <clears throat> uh, I do, well, never mind. If you had a good time, uh, like and share this. Please subscribe to help me grow. Comment to tell me I'm wrong, or help me improve, or just talk Star Wars with me. And remember, in balance lies power to hear the dark and walk in light. Thank you.